Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We're here today to talk about the latest update to the Intel Nook platform. That's the next unit of computing, although I honestly don't know if they even go by that nomenclature anymore. This is the brand new Broadwell version of the Intel Nook, launched at CES just this past January. Uh, Intel sent us along the NUC515RYK, which Again, even though they improved the model numbering system, still not ideal, but that's uh, what we're dealing with here. This is a bare-bone system, uh, bare system rather that will run you $369 or so as the MSRP, and that gets you uh, the processor and your wireless, and obviously the motherboard and everything, and you'll have to add uh, an SSD of some kind, an M.2 SSD, as well as system memory. And other than that, obviously an operating system, uh, you'll be able to get a pretty well configured system for anywhere from $500 to $600, mostly depending on uh, what you want to do for SSD capacity. Now this particular model is one of the more thin designs. You can see here, this is the Gigabyte Bricks, also braced, uh, based on Broadwell that we reviewed uh, about a month ago or so. This one has support for two and a half inch hard drive inside. This does not. Uh, also keep in mind, this processor is the Core i5 5250U, obviously the upgrade from the 4250U that was used in the previous iteration. Um, and it is a dual core hyper-threaded part that actually has a higher end graphics solution than the uh, bricks based on Broadwell that was using a Core i7-5500U. Uh, interesting kind of difference here. This has a higher end processor, uh, faster processing, uh, higher clock speeds on its, on its processor, and this has higher clock speeds and more compute units on the GPU side. So if you look at the performance of this device compared to even the BRICS from uh, the Broadwell based BRICS device, it's going to be slower on our CPU benchmarks and faster on our graphics benchmarks. Although the difference in the graphics performance is very minimal, uh, and the difference on the CPU side is a little bit more noticeable. The BRICS is faster. It, uh, it does have a different TDP than what we have on this device as well. So there's interesting differences there to keep in mind as you talk about this particular nook. Um, it does have quite a bit of connectivity for such a small device. On the front, you've got two USB 3.0 ports. One of them is yellow to designate uh, fast charge capability, so you can charge your tablet or smartphone. You have a three and a half inch, I'm sorry, a, a millimeter connection there for your headphones, input, output, one, one single connection there. You've got your Kensington lock connector, which you need. And then on the back, you have a mini display port. You have a gigabit Ethernet, two more USB 3.0 ports, and a mini HDMI connection along with your power. So you've got all kinds of connectivity there. And then opening this up uh, is actually pretty easy. We've already got, they've actually got uh, thumb screws on the bottom of this through the rubber feet. And when you take it apart, really all you have to do to get this to work is install two components, right? You've got your memory and your SSD. Now these aren't always the easiest to get out of here. If you're familiar with the Nook designs at all, this will look very familiar to you, right, in the inside in terms of you've got your four inch by four inch or so motherboard. And on this, the wireless is actually built onto the motherboard itself. So you don't have to worry about installing that. You only have your M.2 SSD, as well as your uh, SODIMM slots here for memory. This is actually an Intel SSD 530 series, a SATA based M.2 SSD. We saw performance you know, around 400, 500 megabytes per second. They also sent along this Samsung PCI Express SSD. I believe it's the XP941. Still M.2, but PCIe based. And uh, we're saw, we saw read speeds of around a gigabyte per second or so with this particular SSD. It all depends on what you want to spend and what kind of performance levels you need out of your particular device. Also worth noting is that the lids on this actually, let's see if I can do this with my fingernail come off on the Intel Nook in order to have, you can do things like get different colors or, you know, maybe some vendors will release those that have NFC on them, kind of like we saw on the Bricks device, or you could get some with all kinds of different accessories on there. So you can see just the totally torn apart device here. I, I'm, I kind of seriously doubt, unless we see a, a big uptick in the acceptance or the adoption rather of the Nook devices that you'll see a whole lot of variations of what's available for these types of covers. But it's an interesting idea and I'm glad to see Intel kind of expand on that. So uh, we have a full review over at PCPro.com. It's a fairly straightforward piece. We look at the inside, we look at the installation, we look around the outside. And if you want to see those particular performance numbers, you've got SciSoft and Cinebench and 3 Mark to kind of see how this compares to some of the other small form factor platforms as well as some laptops and some other uh, desktop processors 
processors that have been around for a while. I, I continue to be impressed by the innovation here. I mean, remember how super thin this is that you get basically the innards of a Broadwell-based Ultrabook inside this device. 369 bare bones price. You're looking at anywhere from 500 to 600 or above, depending on the components that you want to add to it for a full system. So again, not a budget product, but still really, really interesting. And I think a lot of people will find these useful for, you know, just uh, headless or not headless PCs, but machines that you mount to the back of a TV or something for home office uh, or even for home theater PCs because it has the ability to support 4K video output as well. So there's a whole lot of flexibility inside this Intel Nook. Check out the full review over at PCPer.com and we'll see you next time. Thanks.